Let's get started. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us for the second edition of GoSeek webinars. Uh, we're joined by Vash Shankar, Director of Growth at Math Street 10. And today's webinar is, is about using LinkedIn as an outreach platform for closing more deals, right? This is an ex exciting conversation, especially for the startup and the SaaS marketing folk out there. Uh, so before we get started, for those of you who haven't heard of GoFloaters before, we are a platform for finding work and meeting spaces on demand. Through our app, you're able to book offices, meeting spaces, and event spaces by the hard day or the month, right? GoSeek is a part of the community events that we conduct very frequently aimed at uh, startups, freelancers, and SMEs. And if you're interested in more such events, our newsletter, follow us on our socials. And without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I am just stopping the screen share. Over to you, Vas. Hey, thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Hey all, um, thank you so much for making your time on your busy weekend. Uh, hope, I guess, weekdays and weekends are looking the same for, for us these days. But anyways, thank you so much for taking your time and I'm here to share my learnings. Hope everyone is able to hear me. Loud and clear was. Okay, thank you. So without further delay, I'm going to share my screen. So hope you people are able to see my screen. Yep. Okay. Yes, all good was. Wonderful. Guys, keep the questions coming in the chat. As Vas is going ahead with the conversation, Venkat Live will keep noting all of them down to make sure we ask them. Drop in all your questions so that we, we, we don't lose them towards the end. We'll make sure that Vas answers all of them for you guys. If that's an okay, let me know yes in the chat, guys. I will ask Vas to get started. Absolutely, guys. For whatever questions you guys have, please make sure you drop it on the chat. Uh, if there are uh, multiple uh, people asking the same question, I will definitely uh, note it down and, uh, and ask it to Vas. Uh, and we'll also make sure Vas answers all, all of your questions. Uh, so please do not forget to drop your questions on the chat. Okay, so are, are we good to start? Absolutely. Thank you. So um, this session is all about my LinkedIn learning so far, how I'm able to leverage LinkedIn to make my connects, make some conversations and make uh, demos, meetings happen and make closures happen. Everything just along with LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn as a channel has worked great for me. And I'm here to actually share my learnings, whatever little I've learned so far using LinkedIn. And this is what uh, I'm willing to share with you people. So uh, I'm just starting with a saying from Keith Ferrazzi, the currency of real networking is not greed, but generosity. So uh, some of the facts, which most of you would have already known about it. Uh, this is what the facts are uh, about LinkedIn. Uh, so uh, let me start with starters, right? Uh, what exactly make LinkedIn fascinating is the number of people who are uh, available on LinkedIn, not just that, the number of people whom you are trying to target are available on LinkedIn. So where do you start, right? Uh, that's a question many people, are, many of you might have. Where do I start in LinkedIn, right? So the answer is very simple. Just narrow down on what is the industry uh, or a space you're trying to go after, right? So that is really the first uh, thing that you'll have to find out. Then you have to probably narrow down on the geos that you're trying to go after. Then probably narrow down to the titles that you're trying to go after, right? So though, if you know all these three, if you have answers for all the three, then you are good to go, right? You're good to start your um, uh, networking on LinkedIn, right? So um, questions about, uh, hey, uh, I would like to have a quick question now. The questions are going to only come after I end the conversation or how is this? Uh, was so people are going to be uh, posting their questions on the chat, right? Uh, so you can choose uh, which question you want to answer by just opening the chat from time to time. Okay. Uh, I will also stop you uh, if there are uh, if there are multiple multiple people asking the same question. Uh, we will I will also make sure it gets answered. Sure, sure.
So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you know the titles, if you know the geo, if you know the uh, space you're trying to go after, then what, what, what is that you're waiting for? You just have to look for people, right? So I'm just taking a small example of, um, let's say I'm trying to go after banks as an example, right? So uh, in this specific example, what I'm trying to show you is I'm using Sales Navigator. In fact, you could use a regular LinkedIn as well to do a search, but I will, I will uh, I'm, over the conversation, I'm going to show you why Sales Navigator could be a pretty useful tool for people who are trying to network on LinkedIn, right? Uh, I'll be covering that as well, but to begin with, let's say you're trying to go after banks, right? So you will say search for leads in Sales Navigator, use specific keywords if you're looking for, let's say, I'm looking for, I'm looking for FinTech as a space or banking as a space, right? So for example, banking, retail banking. So if you're specific about locations, you could add locations here. So let's say I'm going to just go after the United States as a location or India, you could choose, right? Then if you have specific titles to go after, you could put them in the title section, right? So let's say I'm looking for CTOs to go after, right? So this comes up with the search results, right? Now the challenge is, uh, how big is your network is? Many of us uh, could be just started using LinkedIn. So your network size will be very small. So the challenge there is most of the people showing up on your search results could be a third degree connection, right? If it is a second degree connection, then you're good to connect with that person because the mutual connections that you have is more and when people will not object to your request, right? They will see, okay, who are the people I'm connected with? So it says chat, two chat connections, then they are actually ready to accept your request. But the challenge lies on if the people are in your third degree connections, right? So how do you get across that? The first thing to get across that is you may have to increase your network connectivity. When I say increase your network connectivity, what I mean by that is you have to make sure that you are actually getting connected with uh, what, we, what I call it as influencer in the specific industry. For example, if you're trying to go after banking as a space, right, then search for influencers in that specific banking space and make sure that you're getting connected with each of these influencers. The advantage of getting connected with these influencers is when you connect with a specific influencer, mostly they are connected with most of these uh, target prospects you are trying to reach out for. So uh, the first um, way to increase your connectivity is getting connected with influencers, right? For, or the other way to look at it is even internal colleagues in your organization. For example, let's say uh, I'm joining a specific company today and I'm new to banking space, for example. Let's say I'm new to banking space, but I'm joining this specific company called X, X as a company name. So in that X company name, there are people who have been years together in that company, right? So they might have multiple connects in the banking vertical. So the first thing for me to do, go, do first thing is, I may have to connect with all the colleagues in that company. So whenever I'm getting sending a request to this specific person, for example, Seth Decker, if my colleague is connected with that person, then I'm, when I'm sending him a request, I'll, that'll be a mutual connect for me to send a request across. So I'm in a safe space. So the first thing uh, if you, are do, uh, you have to do is, when you are sending a request to an unknown person, make sure you have a mutual connect available. How to increase your mutual connects is getting across, getting connect requests to influencers, getting requests even for your in, uh, in-house colleagues who might be have multiple connects in that specific vertical, right? So once you start building your network, then obviously most of your connects will start showing a second degree connection. There are, there are people who send requests with an intro message in it. There are pluses in it, there are uh, negatives as well in it. So when you send a request with an intro message, if I'm sending, if I'm getting a request uh, with an intro message as a subject line of my request, I don't actually accept it because many a times I feel that that message is fishy because this person is trying to sell something to me. That is what typically the mindset is, right? Many a times we get intro requests about from recruiters trying to uh, say, hey, I have an, an interesting offer for you. So many a times, we, if I feel if I'm very happy with the company, then I might say, 
i am not interested i i just I don't accept that request so make sure that when you are sending a request to someone if you have mutual connect you don't have to send an intro message because intro messages always have a, a when somebody receiving a, a request with an intro message they always have something in their mind saying that hey is this trying person trying to sell something to me so um, uh, so again there are people who say hey if you don't have enough mutual connects then obviously you may have to send an intro message but make sure that you send them intro message that doesn't talk about your product or service this is why let's say i'm sending an intro request to someone where they do, i don't have a mutual connect i will send a request nice uh, intro about that person i'm sending the request to for example i'll say hey you are a market pioneer in this industry i am actually trying to connect with you because i could learn something from you those kind of messages probably people have a higher percentage of accepting your their your request rather than you talking about your product or solution straight away as a pitch in your intro message the next thing which uh, i would like to uh, go as a starter is yes you are trying to build a list you are trying to send a request to titles you are trying to send request to geos that you are trying to go after the next next thing what you could do is always try to look for groups right groups is one way to look for um um information that you are looking for for example many of the companies that you are trying to target are specific in specific groups for example as i mentioned to you uh, let's say i'm i'm trying to sell um, uh, a crm software right so i'm looking for sales and marketing specific groups right so i will say sales and marketing i'm sorry i'll have to go for groups and and say sales and marketing right so the advantage of joining groups is let me show you some of the examples of what i am joined so that'll give you an idea so uh, i am in the retail automation space so as you could see i have connected with uh, industry groups like apparel retail executive fashion marketing and things like that right the advantage of joining groups is there are prospects uh, there are multiple prospects posting information you cannot sell anything through groups but let's say that i am i'm trying to send a request to a person where i don't have a mutual connect but let's say me and him are connected in a specific group that again gives me an advantage of that person accepting my request so groups does not only give information about that specific prospect what he is posting what his interests are but it also gives you an opportunity to connect with that person because you both belong to the same group right that's one more advantage of joining groups but groups give you a lot of information about a specific company because at the end of the day what you're trying to do is you're trying to impress upon that specific prospect to buy your product or service to bring in a demo meeting or a, a demo or a meeting request from that person right that is the end uh, the bottom line you're looking for so these group will give you immense information about what you're trying to sell right there is one more way of um, getting noticed in fact i'm going to cover that in the upcoming um, so talking about sales navigator uh, against uh, the generic uh, linkedin what uh, a free tool that you have right so in in specific linkedin what's what the challenge is you cannot go beyond specific uh, number of pages it stops with 10 pages right the second uh, disadvantage is you cannot send more than specific number of requests it it has a it it gives you a block and things like that when you use sales navigator then you are free to send uh, a, a specific number of requests which is not available on a free plan right apart from that as i mentioned you could create lead list for example you are trying to go after specific banks you are trying to go after specific uh, uh, companies in apparel industry or any any industry that you are trying to go after you could uh, create lead list when you create lead list you are not only sending requests to them you send you could send out campaigns to them right let's say you you find ways to find their email id then you could also create campaigns around that right so sales navigator as a tool 
will provide you all this information. Apart from that, it also gives you what is important called a follow up list. For example, as you could see here, I'm following many companies in this, right? So the advantage of following a company or a prospect is whenever that company posts any information or whenever that, that person posts information on LinkedIn, you get a notification. And what is what is the advantage of getting that notification? You could tailor made an email message to that person saying that, hey, it looks like you posted uh, this message. We have a solution that could address this, right? So you are actually on top of whatever he's posting, that company is posting. All this information are gold. These are very, very, uh, very, very important for you to follow the companies and, and the prospects as well, because when you make messages to them, you're actually sending out a message which is relevant to the post that they have posted, right? So you're not just like that, sending a marketing message which always talks about your product or service, right? You are trying to make a tailored message which is actually trying to address the problem that the specific company or the prospect has. So this is very important as well. This is very important feature in Sales Navigator where you could follow a company or a prospect. Both you could do. Apart from that, LinkedIn also provides you, Sales Navigator provides you this feature called in-mail, right? Uh, I, I actually did not uh, understand or uh, leverage the, the power of in-mail, uh, in fact, a couple of months before. But right now, I'm actually sending a lot of in-mails because in-mails, even when a person does not accept your request, there is a high probability that he actually responds to your in-mail. Again, the in-mails have to be uh, drafted, keeping in mind, the problem statement, what that person has posted on LinkedIn, right? When you make a email message, uh, of course, they don't give you that many credits. They give you about 60 or 70 credits in a month. So make sure that you use the credits effectively. So uh, can I take on any questions so far, um, team? Or can I move on? Uh, was there are some questions that people have posted on the chat. Sure. I will, I'll be happy to take questions that. Questions about connecting to people that are not on uh, uh, this, right? If you could answer that, that would be great. What is that? Well, I did not get that. Okay, so let me let me just read it out, right? Okay. So, would it be better if you give a personal invite to people you do not know? Right. Or what? What is the what is the uh, uh, content that you put on the on the invite, right? And sure couple of other questions along those same lines, right? I think it's, it's got to do with uh, how do I connect to somebody that is not on my mutual list or how do I effectively use use connections when I don't have LinkedIn premium? Okay, sure. So uh, as I mentioned uh, in my conversation, uh, when I'm sending a request to a stranger who I'm not connected with, I don't have mutual connects, right? For example, if I go to an example here, So for example, the, he's a third degree connection, right? So um, there are two ways you could do, do this, right? Let's say you don't have LinkedIn premium, so you cannot send an email to him, understood? So what, what, what more you could do? You could either send an email to him if you have tools to find email IDs. Yes, I, let's say you don't have that as well. So how do I send a effective um, uh, in, uh, intro message to him, making sure that he accepts your uh, request, right? So I will always say, um, I will not talk about uh, my product or service. I will say something like this, right? Again, uh, this could, um, you could tweak and uh, have your own kind of uh, wordings, but this is what typically uh, when I send, uh, people get uh, immediately get, get attention from. Uh, for example, being in the same domain or being in the same space would like to c connect and learn from a, again, there, there's some, something salesy about this, but it works. This is what I will, I, I have sent, uh, in fact, to be honest, you could even pers more, personalize more than this. For example, uh, let me give you some uh, small insight, right? For example, let's say that 
you know that this person um, has recently joined this company, for example, this bank, for example. So when you are trying to send a, a request to that person, make sure that you address that. So for example, I'll say, congrats on your recent new assignment, for example. I look forward to learn a lot from you. Something like that. So if you know that this person has joined this company, you could personalize a message or you know that this person has uh, accomplished something which you have read as a news. Add that news to the invite and make sure that he gets at the necessary attention. That is one way of doing it. So the other way, uh, if you, as I mentioned this, if you feel that, okay, uh, I don't think this person is going to accept my request. Uh, before that, uh, let me also give a valid point here. For example, before I send a request to this person, I will see the number of connection he has, right? 106 connection he has. I don't think he is actually that active on LinkedIn. For me, any person above 500 is uh, at least, if he's re re uh, reached a reasonable, uh, he's, a, he's a senior person, he's reached a level, I guess he need to have, he, this person has got 13 years of experience. He's got 106 connection. I don't think he's active on LinkedIn. So for me, how to best leverage this, right? So if he's not active on LinkedIn, Sending him an email, even if I do, if I have a LinkedIn premium account, sending him an email is not going to help because he's not going to see that message. Okay, so the best way to attack him is unfortunately through email only, right? So when you are sending a request, make sure that if he's a public profile, then he could see that when was the last post he has made, right? That will give you indication whether he's active on LinkedIn if it is not a public profile, look at the number of connection he has, then send him a request. Otherwise you will send him a request and you will assume that he has not accepted his request. You will be waiting for it to, uh, to accept your request, which is not going to happen. So make sure that you are sending him a request. One day he has got a specific number of connection. One day he has got posted something or liked some posts. It doesn't mean that he has to post something, right? If, I, if, you, if, he, if that person likes a post or comments on a post, it will also show on his public profile. Then you know that he's active on LinkedIn, right? The other thing which I forgot to mention about um, uh, Sales Navigator is basically it also shows you something called, um, for example, let's say I'm, I'm looking for Bank of Bridger as a company name, right? It also gives you something called Decision Makers. There are only 26 employees, but there are four decision makers. Decision makers could be the CXO level titles, right? So I will make sure that I'm connected with these decision makers. For example, director of human resources is not a perfect title for me, but let's say chief credit officer is a perfect title for me, then I will send a request. So when you send a request for multiple titles and multiple people in the same company, that there are multiple advantages to that. Because let's say you're sending requests to five people, there are chances that at least two of them or at least one of them will accept your request. So the probabilities of you selling to that company, not even selling, communicating to that company is on a high percentage. So don't stop with just one request. Let's say there are five CEOs in that company, make sure you sell at least to three or four of them. And the more mutual connects you have, obviously the, the, the high percentage, they are going to accept that. Any other questions? Or right. we, must, we are receiving a lot of questions about uh, email tools, right? Uh, yes, what yes. Kind of email tools do, uh, do you recommend uh, to... Sure, sure. LinkedIn? Definitely. I, I'm, I, per, I used to work for a company called eGrabber. Uh, they also use, have uh, email scraping tools, right? So you could check that out. I personally use a, a tool right now, uh, which actually popped up when you are actually, uh, when I was trying to open this, a specific link it actually popped up do you see that uh, on the right hand side you see that there is a pop up comes up uh, this tool is called lucia okay so what this tool does is basically it, it comes up as a pop up whenever you open up a linkedin profile it comes up a pop up and when you click on show that specific person's email not only email uh, his phone number and mobile number shows up and there is a high percentage that um, um, in fact i will say i will probably Votes that 80% and above the email IDs are correct. At least for US, 
US, uh, <coughs> India, um, Middle East, Southeast Asia, the countries which they don't, uh, there are not much of success is Southeast Asia is not much of success with any of the tools. Uh, in fact, I could also suggest you more tools. I will come to that. Uh, Southeast Asia is one territory where uh, people are not, uh, uh, they are not that much active on LinkedIn. For example, a place like China, Japan, they are not that much active on LinkedIn. It's very difficult to find people on LinkedIn, uh, active, active people on LinkedIn. So apart from that, uh, most of the other countries, they are able to cover. Okay. Now you also, you personally use Zoom Info. Uh, Zoom Info is another perfect uh, tool uh, where you could uh, build lists. For example, let's say you're trying to go after uh, Bank of Majura, for example, you could type in Bank of Majura in uh, Zoom Info. It gives you all the people who they have, uh, have the email IDs, right? So then you could search for CTOs. You could search for um, specific titles. You could specialize your search and, and build a list using Zoom Info as well. So Zoom Info is one tool. Um, uh, eGrabber is the other one. Lusha is another one I personally watch for. Uh, these are the tools we could use for uh, building up your email list. Also, let's say that you as a person could not afford uh, these kind of tools. Let's say uh, you could also make up email IDs very, uh, very easily. Uh, uh, there are multiple ways you could make up email IDs. And many a times uh, the, when you make up email IDs, they are uh, many a times there are correct, correct characters as well. But if you could afford a tool, then you could uh, consider any of these tools. Any other questions on those lines? No, worse. nothing. Okay. We, we are good to go. Sure. Give me one second. So um, actually, you posted the right question about uh, add-on tools. So um, as I mentioned, um, these are the tools I use. I also use another tool for sending out emails, right? Uh, I use Yesware. So Yesware is a tool where you could track your emails. Um, so uh, this gives you visibility on how many people opened your email. And whenever people you open your email, it is like the number of times they open their email, it gives you more. <coughs> Uh, success rate, right? So for example, if somebody opens your email multiple times and there's a high probability that the cust they, they might come back to you, if they don't come back to you, then there is your chance to actually go back to them because you could find there is some interest to them. So if you use a tool elsewhere, then you could track your emails. There are also other, uh, there are also free tools available for uh, tracking your emails. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you can't afford elsewhere, then you could also look at other tools as well. And uh, as far as um, uh, CRM, I, I personally use Salesforce. There are also plenty of other tools available. So the advantage of using uh, something like a Salesforce is, uh, let me give you the workflow that I carry uh, in my everyday sales process, right? The, the workflow I carry is, let's say, uh, I, I actually wake up and uh, sleep with LinkedIn. That's the way I use LinkedIn to that extent, right? So every day, the first thing I do is, Okay, so first thing I do is I go to my network, right? And how many people have accepted my request? Okay, so go to my connections and see how many people have accepted my request today, right? Then, then what I do is I manually go and add them on my Salesforce. The reason I, why I add them in Salesforce is if I don't add them in Salesforce, how do I keep track of my whatever, whatever activity I've connected with that, right? So before I add them in Salesforce, I make sure that if I find their email ID. So uh, you people will think that, okay, sales in LinkedIn, there is an email ID available, right? So but most of the people only show up personal emails, right? So if you have their official email, uh, then the, uh, you could add them in Salesforce. But let's say that you're not able to find their uh, official email anywhere. You use different tools, but you're still not able to find their right email. Then uh, I, in fact, I will, uh, many people will not recommend this, but for me, I will have to communicate to any, some channel. Uh, at least if LinkedIn, they're not responding. I don't mind even sending them to, the, uh, to your personal email. 
because I've done that many a times and it has uh, partially been successful because many people always have that feel, right? Oh my God, what will I, will they think if I send an email to their personal email? It will be too uh, spammy or will they think that it is something ar around their privacy and things like that, right? But um, as a salesperson, I always feel that you have to be desperate. Let's say that um, Niklesh Sundar is the only prospect I'm trying to follow up. I don't have any prospects at all, right? He is my only connect today. And I have no other job. Let's say I, do, I have no other task except to follow Niklesh Sundar. So what will, what will I do, right? I will have to send him a LinkedIn uh, message. Let's say he has not responded. I will, uh, let's say I'm able to find his email ID. I'm sending him an email to his official email. He has not responded. I'm doing all, all it takes to make sure that I get a response from him, at least a no. No is also considered as a response, right? So uh, I, I always feel that as a salesperson, um, you must not lose on a prospect. Uh, I, I must also say that you must not do it too much as well. You must need, you need to draw a line. You need to make sure that you balance it. Let's say today I'm sending in my message. Yes, is someone talking? Okay. So, no. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, okay. So make sure that um, you, uh, the reason why I was emphasizing more on Salesforce is, let's say today I add him, Likle Sundar as an example in my Salesforce, I'll make sure that I add a task in my today list saying that, hey, I'm supposed to follow up with Nilesh Sundar, Nikhil Sundar after a week, after 10 days, after 15 days, whatever it is. And make sure you follow up. This time, the first time I'm sending him a LinkedIn message, it does not have to be a product pitch. It does not have to be a, a solution-based pitch. I'm trying to sell something. Make sure you do the basics before sending him a marketing or a sales message. What I mean by basics, right? Uh, I'm actually going to cover that in my upcoming slide. How do you make a difference when you are sending a message, right? But going after the add-on tools that I use is make sure you have a proper CRM. If you don't afford a CRM, make sure you, have, you, you actually put everything on an Excel file. Make sure that you have a to-do list to make sure that you follow periodically. Don't overdo it. Today of making sure that this person is added, make sure you send a follow-up message next week. And do not give up a prospect unless the prospect says no. If you have a handful of prospects, let's say I have 100 prospects to follow, then I'm okay to give up on a prospect. But let's say if you are more, um, why I say, wiser, I will never give up on a prospect unless he says no to it. So make sure you periodically follow, don't overdo it, 15 days, one month, every two months, whatever it is, right? Make sure that you're making small, small step and impact into the customer's mind. Uh, I will come to that in the, my upcoming slide, how to make that impact, right? Any questions on this? Okay, I'll move on. So everyone is talking about omni-channel, right? What is omni-channel? As far as my LinkedIn activity is concerned, omni-channel is hitting upon a prospect on multiple channels, right? I will not stop with LinkedIn. I will not stop with email. I will go one step, in fact, forward. I will actually stop. I will not stop with phone calls. I will not stop with WhatsApp as well. I will not stop with WeChat. I will not stop with Instagram. Whatever it is, right? Whatever channel the customer is active, the prospect is active, make sure you ping him on that channel. Again, there will be multiple questions asked upon, will, will that be too much? Will that be intriguing to his privacy, right? If you do it, if you play it the way it is not going to be too much, any channel is good enough. Any channel is okay to be messaging him on because you know that this is going to be the only prospect you have. Then obviously you will message him on multiple channels. But make sure that you play it periodically, not do overdoing it, right? So the, 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 I was talking about adding that specific prospect or uh, whenever somebody accepts my LinkedIn Connect, I'll go ahead and add him on Salesforce, right? 
when i add him on salesforce i add a task saying that hey i like to make sure that i send him an email next week the first thing i do is uh i'm i'll send a message to him saying that hey i'm glad that i'm connected with you i'm looking for forward for some meaningful conversation in the upcoming days i will not stop with that i will in fact go and endorse him for his skills this uh, people might think that this is very silly uh, this is <laughs> something funny right but i'll make that as a practice the reason why i do that is to st stand different from others what others are doing right endorsing him on on, on someone's skills is not going to cost you it's probably going to take about 20 seconds of your time but actually you're trying to make an impact what how, how different you are from the other person selling because remember one thing the prospect is going to get hundreds of messages thousands of messages every day and how you are going to be different in what you are doing right endorsing on someone's skills as soon as you get connected is actually a way to say hey hey i respect you i respect what experience you have got in this in the industry you, you looks like you are a, you are an experienced person you know better than what i know in this industry i'm here to learn from you those are the things indirectly you are telling him right so this is the most important question right how can you make a difference so as i mentioned to you before everyone is using linkedin as a channel to message people right everyone is using and how different you are is going to make an impact small differences like this like endorsing someone's skills it uh, probably many of you or at least some of you is are hearing this for the first time but you will not believe most of my connections i've endorsed them for all their skills because i know that at some point of time i'm going to go back to this prospect not just prospects it is not just professional connects they might be helping you in your personal activities as well for example let's say you're looking for a job for your friend or even for yourself right and you are connected with the recruiter you are not sent them sent them any marketing messages so far but let's say you made an impact to them finding at this time let's say at this time you are sent a message to that person that recruiter saying that hey hope everything is fine with you hope you are safe one message will make a lot of difference that person is going to acknowledge it saying that hey thanks for your message and let's say after two months you are going to message that uh, that recruiter saying that my friend is looking for a job i know that your company has recently advertised for a job can you i'm i'm forwarding his resume can you help me out it is not guaranteed that 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 recruiter is going to help you but you have made an impact that she will at least forward that resume to that concerned team member right so small small uh, uh things that you do will make a lot of difference personally as well as professionally right apart from that this notification tab this is actually gold this is like your uh, i was talking about following your leads following your prospects activity right similar to that this notification tab is going to give you lot of insights about your prospects your personal connects your recruiters whom you are trying to look out for a job or whatever it is right make sure that you follow all these notification tabs because you, if somebody's birthday somebody's anniversary somebody is changing job somebody is posting something make sure that you make an impact on that post right for example uh, this could be personal but i'm going to i'm willing to share my personal screen right why i am doing that you see that for today's birthday i wished almost everyone i will not stop whether this person is actually a prospect for me how is this person going to help me in my personal activity for example tomorrow i'm going to look out for a job whether this person is going to help me anyone and everyone i wish them a happy birthday i wish them for their anniversary because that way you're making an impact a small little impact to the person by saying that hey you know what i'm not just interested in selling a solution that i'm doing i'm interested in making you as my friend as my well wisher whatever it is believe me or not whenever i am changing my company and going to a different company i go back to my same old prospects if they are relevant to my business and they hear to me again and again because i have not treated them as my customer i have not treated them as my prospect i have treated them as more than my friend in fact if you look at my uh, whatsapp 
if you look at my phone, if I look at my WhatsApp list, most of my connects, most of my prospects, I have added them on my WhatsApp. The reason why I do that is making small, small impact. Whenever they post a status about their son's birthday or whatever little uh, accomplishment they make on their life, I'm the first to wish them, right? These small, small little things is going to make an impact, not just professionally, but whenever you know you are indeed that small person whom you think is not going to make an impact at all is going to make an impact in your life, right? So apart from that, uh, what other things will make, make, you, make your, your pitch different is, hey, uh, uh, the world is big enough. There are a lot of newsletters you could subscribe to. There is something called Google Alerts. For example, let's say you are a SaaS company and you are selling to banks. Make sure that you subscribe to Google Alerts for banks. A new bank coming in or a, a bank uh, has implemented a new technology. When you are subscribed for that alert, whenever a bank makes a, a new change, you, uh, that notification will come to you as a Google Alert. Make sure that you send a prospect a message that is relevant to that uh, post, right? Similarly, when a notification comes up to you on, on, um, on, your, uh, on your LinkedIn, make sure you send a message relevant to that post. When you subscribe to newsletter, that's the wealth of information you're getting. When a new bank is opening up, when a new company is opening up that is relevant to your business, you're, make, you're getting a notification and you're actually making a custom message. You're not just selling a product. You are actually selling a solution that is going to address the problem that that company is going to have, right? So newsletter, uh, notifications. There's also something very interesting in LinkedIn. That's called tags, for so following specific tags. So this is again a very useful, uh, for example, um, I will show you the tags that I'm following, right? So you could see that apart from groups, follow a hashtags, right? So I'm following all these hashtags that is relevant to the industry I'm in. So whatever industry you are in, make sure that you follow these tags as well. Again, this is information for you to actually build an email for the prospect, making sure that when you follow the tag, when a, when a, when a company that you are interested to sell your products or solution to, post an information, these ta will, tags, these alerts will show up, these notifications will show up, which will make, make a custom pitch, make a, a message and send an email according to what you have posted. Any other questions? There, there are a bunch of questions that people have posted on the chat. Uh, sure. If you can just take a look at it. Okay, one second. I will stop share and uh, see the question or how is that? Hello? No, you can just see the question, uh, Was no problem. Okay. That is it. Uh, on the chat, just click on chat. Just go to Zoom and or or else you know what? Let me just do it myself. Okay, no worries. Um, okay, okay, I'm seeing it. Okay. Okay, so I think there's a lot of questions uh, regarding the sequence, right? Uh, okay. Uh, sequence of uh, how how you reach out to a prospect. Okay. Uh, the prospect does not uh, respond to you on LinkedIn or if the prospect does not respond to you on mail, but responds on LinkedIn, how, how does generally the, uh, okay. The so, uh, to be honest, LinkedIn is actually, uh, the more I talk about LinkedIn, LinkedIn is actually not a comfortable channel as far as texting is concerned. It's actually kind of, uh, irritating channel, uh, because let's say you're sitting in your office and somebody keeps, keeps on sending you messages is very similar to a Facebook messenger. Uh, it's coming like a pop-up and you get irritated easily by multiple messages coming in. Right? So I, once somebody accepts my request, I'll make sure that I limit my messages on LinkedIn to a minimal and more on emails because uh, as more we talk about omni channel, um, the more uh, replies you will get is not just LinkedIn. You will also get replies more on emails. But the way I converse it is, for example, um, let's say I'm, I'm sending uh, someone, a prospect who accepts my request. I have done all the groundwork about um, uh, how glad I am I'm connecting with that person. I've done all the groundwork. 
uh, now I'm, I'm on the second stage of sending him a marketing message, right? So I've sent a marketing message. The prospect reads my message, but does not respond to my message. What, what will I do next, right? The next thing I will do is I'll send him an email stating that the subject line as discussed on LinkedIn. So what I'm trying to do that by that is, you know what? I've actually sent you a message on LinkedIn but looks like you've tied up, you're not able to see my message. Though I know that the prospect has already seen my message, I will actually make a follow-up message of whatever content I've sent on LinkedIn as an email to the prospect. The reason why I do that is, I'm actually sending you an email because we both are connected. It's not an unsolicited email. I'm sending you this email because we both are connected, right? The other easy way of doing it is, most of the conversations, people don't respond, right? The reason why they don't respond is they don't want to get into a commitment with you. Let's say I'm saying that I'm interested. The next thing what you're going to do is, you are going to send me, ask me, hey, when can we set up a demo? When can we set up a meeting? Whatever it is. I'm actually getting into a commitment with you, which is which I don't want to do, right? The simpler way of doing that is, I'm actually making sure that I'm, actually um, making a pull stop to my LinkedIn conversation because it's not that convenient to have a conversation on LinkedIn. I'm actually may, um, extending this conversation to an email channel. How do I do that? Yes, I know that I have, in, I have his email ID. I could always get his email ID by asking him, right? The best thing, the best success rate you will get on a LinkedIn conversation is the prospect giving his email ID to you. Actually speaking, 30% or 40% of your job is done when the prospect himself gives an email ID to you because he indirectly says, I'm interested to hear more about your solution. And yes, he indirectly... One more question along those same lines, right? So, Malesh yeah. uh, is asking at what stage do we categorize someone as a qualified lead? Uh, when you say uh, when you say qualified lead, I, I'm, I'm assuming that you wanted to make sure that you have tons of conversations on LinkedIn, and how who do I bring them to the demo table? Is that your question? Yes, I think that's what he means. Okay, to be honest, I'm actually uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I will never leave a prospect uh, without he coming for a demo table. I, the other way to look at it is uh, he's going to take my more of my bandwidth. It's a useless lead. All that being said nothing like giving a demo to a person right the reason why i say that is let's say you are actually demoing to a useless lead somebody who will think that this person this company does not have money he's going to just waste my time but you never know this prospect you think that he's a useless prospect will actually say you know what i know somebody who in this company who is actually you are actually trying to get into a specific x company and this useless prospect says that I know somebody in that X company that has happened to me many a times. So my, my, my uh, suggestion to is never leave a prospect, bring him out to the demo table. He could be useless. Make sure that you judge that person useless on the call and make sure that you actually say, okay, within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you, you are able to curtail that call. No, you're not going to say, hey, I'm not interested. I don't think this is going to be useful for both of us. You're not going to curtail it. Make sure that you, you are able to establish and move on. Make sure that you nicely say nice things. Hey, um, uh, let's connect later or whatever it is. If you feel you're wasting your time. But I, I will be always be comfortable in bringing the, any prospect in uh, because you feel that he's doing something relevant to your business. Uh, and he could be sometimes useful. In fact, many a times useful is my take on that. Super, super. All right. I think Nikita is also asking, uh, sometimes the prospect responds to me on LinkedIn uh, saying that he's interested, uh, send me more info, but uh, to the email, there is no reply at all. So how do we handle this kind of a situation? Exactly. So many times that has happened to me. So uh, emails, you could see that he has opened the email. Let's say he has not opened the email. So you, you have, you have all the tools in the world to find whether the person has opened the email or not. Right. So you know that the person has opened the email, then the conversation could be different. When you know that the person has not opened the email, then you have multiple reasons to actually communicate on email, sorry, and communicate through LinkedIn. You come to LinkedIn 
and ask him a question. Hey, uh, I've sent you this email a uh, couple of days before. Looks like you might be tied up. I don't think you had a chance to go through my email because you know that the person has op not opened the email. You could still ask that question if you know that the person has opened the email. You could still ask the question in a way that, hey, hey uh, did you have a chance to go through my email? Any thoughts on that? Uh, when do you think we could connect? You could always ask that. But make sure that um, you make that person understand, the other person on the side understand that his time is limited. He's a busy person. You always have to keep that in mind that the other person is always busy because for you is a prospect. He's gold. You cannot lose him at any chance. So you have to make sure that make sure that you add that spice on all your messages, making that he feels important about himself. Right. The other other thing which I wanted to also mention is during these critical times. Right. Uh, we are in COVID times. You know, uh, everyone is under stressed mood. Right? Mood. Right. You cannot make your sales pitches at this time, <laughs> to be honest. But still, I'm doing my sales pitches at this time as well. How do I do that? Right. There is always an emotional quotient. You need to always attach an emotional quotient. Make sure that you attach that emotional quotient before you pitch in about your product or service. The way I go about, for example, is um, let's say you're talking to a prospect in China. Uh, the way I'm communicating these days is, um, hey, uh, hope you, everything is fine at your end. Take care of yourself. Great to see China limping back to normalcy, right? That's the way you start your message if you're communicating in China. You understand the sequence, uh, the seriousness of the issue at that, at that part of the world. Don't start with your sales pitches instantly. Add an emotional content to it. Doesn't mean that just for the sake of it, you're asking. We, as a human, we are all, always concerned about the other person's, your other person's well-being, right? So uh, you add an emotional quotient to it. Then if you seriously want to, in fact, I will say, uh, in fact, many a times, uh, in fact, recently, uh, what has happened is uh, when, when somebody's uh, read your message, the next thing what you want to do is you want to ask him, he's read the message, you want the next thing you want to ask is, hey, when can we have a meeting, right? But you, know, you don't know, the person might respond saying that, hey, do you think this is the right time to have a meeting? He might ask you that question, then where you don't have an answer for that, right? The best way to look at, uh, uh, in fact, you, you're very curious. You want to make sure that you make the closure happen. Closure not in terms of sales. Closure I'm talking about is making that demo meeting happen, right? I will put this in, uh, I've actually put that in this way. I'm not sure whether this is the right time to make sales pitches. That's the way to start it. We, even if you're making a sales pitch, you start it that way. And also on top of it, you make sure that I don't, I don't know whether this is the right frame of mind. You are in a right frame of mind to take a demo meeting at this time. So ask his permission if it is okay to have a demo meeting. These are uh, certain nuances you need to have at this point of time, right? In other points of time, it's okay. You could push, always push a customer to the extent and ask for a demo meeting. But at this time, troubled times, stressful times, you need to make sure that you have an emotional quotient to it and you'll be successful. Absolutely. That was really well answered, was yeah. We can go ahead. Yeah. A any any other questions? I've, I'm almost done with my presentation. I'll be happy to answer more questions. Sure, guys. You can uh, if you guys have any other questions, you can come off uh, mute to ask it to us directly. We'd love to hear you all. Hey, was this is Pramod here? Uh, yeah. You said that you were using Salesforce. Interested? Yeah. Why? Uh, one of the main reasons we are a Salesforce registered partner. Hmm. So I just wanted to know why did you select Salesforce among the millions of other CRM? Now, to be honest, I've used uh, other tools as well. Uh, I'm comfortable with Pipedrive as well as a tool. Uh, I've used Goldmine as a tool as well in my previous companies. Uh, the recent past, in the last couple of years, I've used Salesforce. And uh, the reason why I have liked Salesforce is because of the tasks, right? I'm, I'm a task-driven person. Every day, I wanted to make sure that how many tasks I've got, that is comfortable, uh, very comfortable in adding notes and uh, adding notes and adding, um, uh, op creating opportunities, very straightforward. And the way I look at uh, uh, CRM is, it has to reflect what you're doing. Um, at the end of the day, let's say you're leaving a company, right? The way you have to be organized is, if somebody is taking over uh, you as a person, um, and if somebody is taking over in your absence, they have to know exactly what happened to that specific prospect. In fact, uh, in uh, one of my previous assignments in Orenscape, 
Suresh Samandam used to tell me, he used to actually uh, enter in, a, in, in a, the CRM. When I, when I called the customer today, he actually uh, was smiling on the other side. He said, the weather is pretty good today. He actually entered those, no, those notes on the CRM. It has to be as detailed as that, as that right? So uh, you, will, you will not believe that when you look, go back and look at those notes, you will actually know what the prospect is going through. What, what is the mood of the prospect? What exactly is the, as the, as the personality of the prospect, right? Those things are very helpful in, in Salesforce when adding notes to your specific uh, tasks. So why, why I asked this, as I, as I told you, we are a Salesforce partner. Mm -hmm. Pretty much all the comments we get it is, uh, get from our uh, partners or people who are using it is that it's too expensive for a for a small time company to use it or for a startup to use. So um, is it only that? Uh, do you know any segment of a five member team or a ten member team which is using it, or only big time companies which are using? It? Uh, to be honest, uh, we, our our company uh, is just a ten member team only. So we are not. Um, in fact, I'm talking about just sales team, right? Okay. We are, we are uh, 250 plus uh, company, but a sales team is just 10, 15 people using it. Thank so you. I will not uh, go with the fact, uh, even two people, uh, in, in fact, in my previous assignment, we were just three people using Salesforce. So I will not just rule out the fact that it's, it's powerful, right? It doesn't, yeah. uh, it doesn't mean uh, that only uh, 50 people, 100 plus people, uh, companies use Salesforce. No, uh, we've implemented even one license. But exactly. From the exactly. sales angle, I was just... Uh, no, no, not really. Not really. Yeah. I will, yeah. Thanks, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Pramod. Do, uh, guys, do, do you... Do you uh, does anyone else have a question? Please yeah. Yeah. Nav yeah, yeah. Navin here was... I'm from e but I was... Hey, yeah. Yeah, great. So, uh, particularly speaking, like when you are doing a particular search with LinkedIn, you may end up some... Uh, let's take example of some 500 results. And may you see an option in Sales Navigator which shows you like uh, at least 50% uh, change their job in like 30 days, right? 30 or 90 days. You have Perfect. an option to, yeah. Do yes, you think yes. uh, uh, they are the good prospects to uh, target? Because I have two thoughts on them. Since they're new to a company, they may be looking for some new vendors to a company. So they may might be uh, thinking of changing some, uh, bringing some new uh, clients, uh, products to the company. And the second thing is, even though they are a decision maker, since they're new to a company, uh they may not be allowed to take some new decisions so what's your view on this in fact it's a perfect uh, i actually uh, did not mention enough about this this um, uh, people who are changed jobs right that's a great way to actually look at for example um, um let's say uh, again going back to the example of a specific bank right so let's say that um, you are a you uh, your customer Worked in a specific bank has changed jobs, right? Yeah. Who are, who else you could go after? That's the best prospect, in fact, uh, to go after, right? Apart from that, uh, you, going back to the point of when a person changes job, right? There are two ways to look at it. One is he will either use the old tools who which which he was using in his previous company. Uh, one is that. Second way it is he he wants to uh, venture into the tools that the current company is using, you don't want to take chances. There are two ways to look at it. The, the other way to look at it is, as a new person, I always wanted to man, make sure that I'm the best for this job. I wanted to prove something to the management, right? So if I'm successful in my previous assignment with a specific tool or a solution, I wanted to make sure that I bring in that tool and tell the company, hey, you know what? I used this in my previous company. I used Salesforce in my previous company. I wanted to make sure that we use Salesforce here as well because I was, I was effective in my old job as well. So um, he was, as he was mentioning about um, making a pass lead and account activity, you could go and people who have changed jobs, that's a perfect way actually to, even when you send requests, when they have joined a new company, you could actually tell them, hey, congrats on your new job role. I've, I'm looking forward to connect with you. Similarly, well, let's say you use your old customer you could actually go back to him saying that in his new company, you could try our, your solution. Thanks, yeah. Naveen, for that. Great, great. Thank you, Us. Yeah. Thanks, Naveen. I think Rubina has raised her hand. Rubina, sure. you can do it. Yes, Rubina. Hello. Okay, I think we've... 
Uh, I have a question, Wes. Please go ahead. Yeah. So, Hello. Uh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I'll carry on later. You can talk. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, I have a couple of questions here. So, mm -hmm. say for example, once you have built a strong uh, network with thousand connections or maybe two thousand connections, apart from sending uh, messages to the connects about introducing your solution or whatever, how do you generate leads from them once you have a very good connection when you say leads from them uh, what do you mean by that uh, create interest like a inbound where people how do people come to us by seeing our profile okay so um, uh, there are two kinds of um, um, profiles on linkedin one is uh, who are active um, and the other people who are will just go through everyone whatever you're posting right so um, the other way to engage people is you could post information about your solution and product uh, okay. all the time. So uh, when, when we talked about omni-channel, right? Mm -hmm. Omni-channel uh, is, is a combination of uh, LinkedIn, email, uh, even, even LinkedIn ads, right? When somebody is active on LinkedIn, uh, your product or solution ads could run on the other side. So he, he is not just uh, when you message him, he has seen your message. He has also seen your email. He is also seeing your ad, right? So that's an omni-channel experience. So he suddenly clicks on your ad. That's an inbound interest he's able to generate. But to be honest, it's an omni-channel experience because you could always go to go back to your marketing team and say that, hey, you know what? I've actually sent him an email. I've actually sent him a request. I've also sent him a LinkedIn message, but he has actually clicked on the ad and come. So that's the, that's a perfect example of an omni-channel experience. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. Yes, Rubina, you could go, go ahead with the question. Yeah, uh, it's actually I joined the session late. I was not no there, but the introduction was done. Mm. Uh, I saw your profile on LinkedIn. Mm. I just want to know uh, about your uh, uh, you are into AI and fashion industry. I, mm. I was just curious to know how, how does it work if it's related to this workshop? I don't think so. It's related. No, no, it's not related to this. Uh, yeah. So we are a retail, we are a re retail automation platform. Uh, especially um, uh, for the fashion and the luxury space. Um, okay. So e-commerce companies uh, use our solution. Okay. And one more thing is, uh, how far is LinkedIn far more better than Instagram right now? Because the scenario of uh, like marketing trends, mm. which one do you feel is better, Insta or the LinkedIn one? To and be honest, honest, yeah, to be honest, uh, Insta is, is as a channel is actually uh, coming up pretty aggressively, hmm. but uh, still um, the conventional way of LinkedIn messaging and LinkedIn ch as a channel uh, hmm. has not, to be honest, let's say if you're looking at uh, LinkedIn, for example, let's say uh, you're looking at someone's profile and you're hmm. trying to uh, follow, uh, look for their profile in Instagram as well. Okay. You can always see that uh, there are more people available on LinkedIn um, on the professional side, right? So, uh, uh, the, the answer to your question is yes, Insta is also coming up, but mm -hmm. not to, to an extent of LinkedIn way. Yes, Insta is for sure is going to catch up because I have also started using Insta as a channel for messaging people. Okay, thank yeah. you. No worries. All right, guys, I think with that, we've come to the end of the webinar. It's four o'clock. Uh, it's it's been an absolute pleasure to host you all uh, thank you for joining us on uh, hey venkat uh, sham here can i ask one final question to us sure go ahead sir. i know we're over, over four o'clock and i also want to say thanks uh, as i end my question so was uh, one thing i'm curious about is that uh, you you covered how uh, linkedin can be used as a sales uh, prospecting tool and uh, subsequently to warm the leads and all that, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, can I, I, I'm curious to know how much time uh, do you spend in building your personal brand and your you as a thought leader uh, through the content, through the comments and all that, right? Do, do, you, do you feel that, uh, I mean, what, what should be the uh, uh, time that somebody should spend, right? To, to kind of not just use it as a tool to search and all that, but do you think that uh, that's also something we should focus on to uh, in terms of publishing posts or publishing pulse uh, articles or commenting on other articles and all that so you how, how, how much do you give weightage to yeah great question thank you so um, to be honest um, uh, in the beginning of the conversation itself I was talking about the whole the almost the whole day uh, uh, except that our time of sleeping I'm, I'm always on LinkedIn so 
it's all the time i'm i'm uh, liking commenting on posts uh, and things like that and also sharing posts right so um, it doesn't have to be only solution related your product and solution posts you, you need to post right you as a personality because uh, just just not the company what you are representing you as a personality you are going to represent your own thoughts as well on linkedin right so it's very important how you use it uh, just not on the professional gain as well but also on the as a personality how you show up yourself okay thank you most welcome all right uh, okay so i think with that we will be closing questions uh, since we don't want to stretch it uh, any more uh, guys please do post it on the comment section i will send all the questions to was uh if there is any interesting question that was wants to answer he will get in touch with you directly uh alternatively you can also get in touch with was on linkedin as well thank you for joining us again uh at gofloaters we are trying to build a community right we are trying to build a, a community of startups and freelancers right and as a part of our offering we also provide uh, startup benefits deals and discounts for our customers and for the last couple of weeks we have opened it up for anybody and everybody and i am pleased to announce that uh, for all the attendees of this webinar we will be sending a discount link for hubspot for at 90% right uh, so please make sure you check your email uh, you you would have to be a startup to uh, make use of the benefit though uh, but uh, if you if you sign up through the form you will be uh, getting a 90% off on hubspot mm -hmm. right and if there is anything else you would like to uh, you'd like to let us know please do uh, get me on linkedin uh get in touch with, get get in touch with us on our socials we would love to hear uh, any other topics that you are interested to see in the future uh and thanks guys thanks for coming Very on good. guys before we wrap we'd love to have a screenshot with all of you to save the memory all right super for sure all of you who all of you who can turn your videos on please do and we'll get a quick quick screenshot and we'll be putting it up on social everywhere guys absolutely i see i see thank you mad cham kaushik as people do that uh, i just want to thank vas for his time i think uh, you vas you are a treasure trove of knowledge on linkedin and, and there's no wonder why you you kind of spend the whole day on linkedin there's so much that you just with that one source you've been able to do so much and uh, so many nuances to uh, the way you use it I, i i i didn't i didn't probably know like 80% of what you just said right i i've not been i've not seen linked in that way right so thanks a lot for uh, kind of showing Thank us the way so to much. do it thank you so much my pleasure uh, my pleasure yeah any time any time always lovely and guys i know we have a lot of questions you guys can always find vas he's as he said always available and very approachable to all of us on linkedin it's vas shankar you guys can find him there thank you vas a little light on your face <laughs> Boss, we'd love to see you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Venkat, can you please take the screenshot? Unfortunately, I'm on, I'm on my phone. Okay. We just need a couple yes, of wave. videos. Smile. Okay. I don't see smile. Yes, wave, guys. You can't see a brighter okay. smile like this, Kaushik. <laughs> <laughs> wave. Wave, wave, guys. Otherwise, won't reply to your questions on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! All right. So, make sure you guys add us on LinkedIn, where we'll let you know about the next webinar. Next Saturday, we will have the next Grocery Edition as well. We will, we will make sure we we take all your feedback and come up with a topic which is relevant to you guys. So, make sure you guys follow us on LinkedIn as well. absolutely uh, uh, in, in the current uh, webinar registration we had asked for some suggestions for the next webinar and uh, there are some very interesting topics that you guys have suggested we will make sure we find somebody to uh, host the next webinar as well uh, thanks again guys thanks for joining us uh, and see you on the next webinar thank you so this much this was super fun guys i'll see you on next saturday at 3 thank, thank you. you thank you so much bye guys thank you thanks again boss we'll yeah, see my, you my pleasure bye bye take care